Hey there, it's Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and Inktimo.com. Today I'm covering the Monteverde Artista Crystal. It's a relatively new pen. It's been out for a couple months now and I kind of dragged my feet getting a video out, but that's okay because this video will be timeless. Uh, anyway, there's four different colors of this pen. It's a low to mid price pen pretty neat um, and so I want to cover it for you, show you what it's all about. I took it home, played with it over the weekend so um, I have some insights Hi. maybe about the pen. But uh, yeah, so let's take a look at the Artista Crystal. This is the Monteverde Artista Crystal box. There you go. This is the clear one that I have here. I've got all four. I'll show them to you in a second. But the box is a little bit thinner than, well it comes in a little outer sleeve kind of thing. There's Monteverde logo, a world of luxury and innovation. So little mountains, kind of nice. You know, they got a cool logo. The box is nice. It's like this mottled green with this silver embossing on it. But um, the Artista Crystal box is a little thinner than some of the other Monteverde boxes. Like the, um, this one is for the Mega, Mega Ink Ball. Um, the ones for the Invincia, the Regatta, the Napa, they're all thicker too. But this, this little guy's a little thinner. So I don't know if that matters to you at all. I, I personally don't really care much about my boxes. In fact, I have like two large bins filled with just empty pen cases because uh, I tend to put them all in my own cases anyway. But here's a pen. So inside you've got the pen and a box of cartridges. Now the box of cartridges is not full. It's only two cartridges and you get a blue and a black. There we go. Ta-da, blue, black. Uh, standard international short. So this is a pretty common, this is the most commonly universal uh, ink cartridge out there. So that's kind of nice that the pen takes at least, you know, a somewhat common size of cartridge. But it does come with a converter too, which is kind of nice because it's a $38 pen, which is, you know, price may vary obviously depending on how much time goes by after I record this video. But, you know, as of right now, it's 38 bucks. Uh, which is a decent pen, and it comes with a converter, which is not always common uh, with pens in this price range. Uh, and by the way, if you're wondering what's on my hands, this is ink from, you know, just living life as a pen guy. So the box itself, the only kind of funny thing about it is it has a removable insert, but there's no room for anything underneath it. So I don't know if you want to fold up a dollar bill or something and hide it or something. I don't know. Maybe you can stick something in there. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, there's a couple of little doodads inside the, inside the box here. Um, one of them is just a little advertising piece telling you to try out their different inks and refills. Monteverdi makes a lot of ballpoint and rollerball refills. So my thing is really fountain pens, I don't know too much about these, but you know, if you like ballpoint stuff, that's a good option for you. Um, and then it's got a little uh, insert here, uh, which pretty much eliminates the need for me to do a video because it's got all the instructions right here about how to fill it and all the parts and everything. Of course, you know, obviously, if that were true, I wouldn't be shooting this video. It's got a limited lifetime warranty kind of thing, basically. They got a pretty decent warranty, so uh, Monteverde is pretty good about that. The only thing is, Monteverde um, advertises, like especially on their box uh, and some of the other places, it says Monteverde USA. The Monteverde as a company is in the U.S., but that's not where the pens are actually made. They're usually made in Asia like China or Taiwan pretty much. Um, the Artista, I believe, is made in Taiwan. I don't have like a definite answer about that. I asked, I got, I think they're Taiwan. So there you go. If that really matters to you, then so be it. But you know, pens in this price range, you kind of have to take them where you can get them. But <clears throat> it's really not a bad pen. I'll be honest with you, I'm a fan. Uh, here are the four colors. There's clear, there's a lime green, there's pink and turquoise. Now, the colors are not like punch you in the face kind of bright. They're, they're kind of subtle. I mean, the clear obviously is, is clear. It is what it is. The, the lime green is not like super bright, annoying lime green. It's, it's, it's not too bad. I actually kind of like this as a green pen. I don't have a lot of green pens, but this is one that I would, I would definitely consider for myself. The pink is a little weak in my opinion, but you know, if you like softer pinks, you know, then there you go. If it was any brighter, you know, it'd probably kind of be annoying. So the softer is actually probably not such a bad thing. Weak maybe is a bad word to use, but I already said it, so I can't take it back. 
And then there's blue. Oh man, I love blue. I have so many blue pens, it's disgusting. But anyway, uh, I do like the clear ones. Uh, and the clear one is the one that I personally chose for myself. So this is my pen in my personal collection. Um, the pen itself has uh, a nice clip. The clip itself is really kind of fat. So it, if you got a really thick shirt material, um, I like to wear like heavy flannel shirts in the winter time. Uh, works well for that. Um, you know, spring, spring tension clip. It works pretty well. You know, it's not the best clip I've ever used and the clip's a little, a little bit on the short side, but you know, for a pen this size, it works pretty well. I have huge hands. So this pen in my hand may look a little bit tiny. It's a pen on the small side, but it's not super, it's not super tiny. I think it's a very pleasing size. Um, the, uh, on the top, it's got this nice little, um, See, my camera doesn't want to focus when I keep going in and out. There we go. It's got this nice little silver accent. It doesn't have a logo or anything on it. It's just a shiny piece of silver. It's kind of a mirror. You can see the camera, and there's me. Hi. You can see my face. How about that? Um, it's, uh, yeah, so that's on the top. It's just a little decorative piece. Uh, it's got a, you know, center band, just kind of a plain center band with uh, Monteverde USA engraved on it. Uh, and then the pen itself, the pen body, it's got uh, a nib, obviously, which you would expect on a fountain pen. It's got some little squirrely doodads. Uh, it says Iridium Point, and then has an M, because this is a medium nib, and that's all they offer in the Artista Crystal. Which, you know, I wish they offered in other ones, because it is a great pen. Maybe they'll expand the offering. I don't know. If it's an extremely popular pen, I'll, I'll talk to some people. I'll, you know, I'll rub some elbows and see what we can do. But no promises, though. Okay, don't take my word for that. But I'll talk. You know, I would love to see this in a fine, or an extra fine, really. But anyway, so it's a number five nib. It's, uh, you know, about the size of a Lamy nib. Here's a... Lamy that I have. It's about the size of a Lamy nib. So that gives you some perspective about its size. You know, very acceptable nib size, um, especially for a pen this size. The body is perfectly clear, no hardware on it or no trim on it at all. And you can see inside it's got a converter, which I actually really like this style of converter because the typical standard international converter looks like this. And then you got all kinds of black chunkiness going on inside of the pen. It's not quite as visually appealing as having this, you know, silver and clear converter. Um, so that's, that's kind of neat. And then one thing that is very notable that we need to discuss about this pen. Well, first of all, it is postable. Okay, there you go. It posts nicely. Uh, it's got a good balance to it when it's posted. Um, the balance is probably a little bit nib, nib forward, I guess you could call it. Um, a little bit more so without the cap, but the cap helps to balance it out pretty well. Um, but then, you know, the pen, because it's mostly plastic in the back and then it's got a very metally front section, uh, it tends to be a little bit nib heavy which I personally don't mind very much. I would rather have a nib-heavy pen than a cap-heavy pen in the back, uh, but that's just my preference. I know everybody's kind of got different tastes. Uh, the thing I want to talk about, though, is this grip section, okay? It's shiny metal. I know some of you are going to just swear off this pen because it is a shiny metal grip section because you don't, you don't like that. And I completely, completely understand where you're coming from. Uh, I tend to be that way too. I have a couple of Lamy Studios uh, and some other pens that have, you know, shiny metal grip sections. And, and the, the complication that can arise if you're like me and have really oily hands, then your hand can get a little slippery on, or your fingers can get a little slippery on this metal grip section. And it can be a little annoying when you're writing for long periods of time because it gets very fatiguing to have to constantly, you know, adjust your fingers. Um, this particular pen, though, doesn't really bother me. I've been using it over the last week or so, and, and I actually don't mind it. Now, granted, I don't sit down and journal like 20 pages at a time. Maybe then it would start to annoy me. But a lot of times I'm just taking notes, you know, a page at a time, and I don't find it very uh, annoying because the uh, I tend to hold my pen, you know, because it's a little bit smaller pen, I've got a three-finger hold kind of like this. Uh, my two fingers here end up being on the grip section, and then my 
thumb actually ends up kind of holding on on the threads or a little bit further back uh, on the plastic part. So I'm actually pretty well grounded here with my thumb. It doesn't slide around too much. So, you know, if you've got a very forward grip and you know your hands tend to be a little slippery, then maybe I would question this pen. But if you hold your pens a little further back or if the metal doesn't bother you, or if you're like me and you could maybe do kind of a hybrid grip like this, then it might be, it might be uh, you know, workable for you. But uh, the pen, <clears throat> the pen comes apart uh, just like that. Here's the body. It's got no hardware or anything on it. And I know it's going to run through your head, okay, because I am a pen dude, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, okay, cartridge converter, clear body, can I convert this thing to an eyedropper? Well, you can, yeah, technically. Uh, I don't know that I would recommend it, though. Um, Monteverdi doesn't say anything about converting it to an eyedropper, so I don't think that they officially recommend it or market it as an eyedropper pen. Now, can you? Yeah, you definitely can. Here's an O-ring. This is a preppy O-ring, uh, you know, pretty common size preppy O-ring. Uh, you just take and, you know, throw this little guy on here. It does kind of want to go down into this little channel, so you have to wrestle with it a little bit. There you go. And then a little silicone grease on the threads maybe, fill the bottle with ink, Put the guy together, bam, done. The O-ring kind of fits in between there, so it doesn't like go over top of the O-ring. You don't want to go super hard with it, but then you have an eyedropper converted pen. But the problem is you've got this metal, cr this chrome-plated metal, you know, section in here, which is meant to accept the converter that is going to be immersed in the ink, and that is not going to be a problem right away, but this chrome is going to corrode over time. So if you're going to be using it as an eyedropper ongoing, then I would say maybe you shouldn't. Or just be aware that it's going to wear down over time and you may have to replace the pen or go back to using it just as uh, a converter pen. So, you know, kind of use your own caution if you want to use an eyedropper. There are no holes in the body or anything like that, so you technically can fill it up with ink and it's no problem, but I just wonder about that chrome. I haven't, you know, I haven't had the pen that long, so I haven't been able to, you know, test it or anything like that, but I would say don't, maybe don't plan on the eyedropper thing. So that's my official whatever. The converter here is different than some of the standard international converters you might have seen. And the reason is because of the size of the pen. Um, this is a Monteverde, Monte, Monteverde? Monteverde converter, specific for the Artista Crystal. Um, it's a little bit smaller than your typical standard international converter. Uh, this is the standard, inter the standard standard international. Is that too confusing? The blend with the black, you see that a lot. A lot of different pens and pen companies standardize on that one. Um, same, it's got the same, you know, uh, grip part here, the opening, uh, so it will fit on the same pens, but it's a little bit shorter. And the, uh, you know, the back part here is kind of clear. It's not, probably not as durable as this one. And if you look closely at the, uh, at the, I don't know how well you can see it here, but the diameter of the standard, standard international seems to be just a little bit bigger. And if you look at when I take the, the seal and pull them all the way up, you can see here that this seal is a little bit further back on the standard standard international. And on the Artista international, it's not going to go quite as far back. So you're going to get a little bit less, maybe 10 to 15 percent less volume of ink in the Artista crystal converter. Is it a big deal? Not really. Um, you know, you just fill it a little bit more often, but... I don't really think it's that big of a deal, but you know, it may be a deal breaker for you, so that's why I'm pointing it out. Uh, the other converter that Monteverde has is the mini converter, which is just a dinky little slide converter. It's, you know, it's pretty flimsy, honestly, but it's, if you want the shortest converter possible, this is going to be your ticket. Look at how short that guy is compared to the other ones. If you use Kawakos or um, there's a lot of other pens that are really small, um, certain Tachia pens, I know, certain other, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I don't know. I can't think of anything else, but there are some really short pens out there, and uh, these little guys are really good for that. So, but um, if you want to use the Artista Crystal uh, converter, you can use it on any pen that will accept a standard international, but your typical standard international converter, where you may have some of these lying around, it will not work in this pen, reason being because it's too long.
So there you go. And that's, that's all of that it's going to go because it starts to bind up here on the sides. The pin's not big enough diameter in the back here to accept the whole converter. And that's as far as it'll get. It's a good half inch shy of being able to thread. So you won't be able to use that one, but you can use either of the other two in this pen. But this is probably the one you're going to use because this is the one that comes in the pen. Uh, this converter does come apart. You can just take and undo it like so. Just unscrew this little metal piece. It's kind of pushing the piston down as I'm doing it, but voila, it comes in several pieces. And if you need to take it apart to clean it, that's easy to do because ink can get behind here. This isn't like the super best, most awesome. Oh, sorry, I'm out of focus. This isn't the super most awesome seal that you're ever going to see in your life, but because you can take it apart, it's really easy to clean it out. And then you just put this little guy back in here, slide the little thing over the thing, and screw it back together. Voila. You can throw a little silicone grease on the seal, on the threads, and have the thing operating really smoothly. There you go. That's, that's how you put that back together. So if you want to use the pen, you know, it's, it's, uh, it accepts standard international cartridges. It also takes the converter, which I am a big fan of converters because I like to use my bottled ink. But the, uh, it's very easy, and I want to show you the coolest thing about this pen. I have a bottle of Diamond Red Dragon, which is, you know, just a bottle I happen to have around. I don't think I've really used this in any videos before, but it's a color that I rather enjoy. It's a nice deep red color. Yeah. And normally, the color of ink that you use in a pen only matters when it's on the page. But because this pen has a clear feed, it does something really cool. I, I personally have never had, except for like a Pilot Plumix maybe, um, or like some of the you know really inexpensive pens, I haven't really had one with a clear feed, at least like this before. Uh, it's very um, neat effect when you um, fill it with the ink. Um, so I'll pull it out real quick because I want to show you what the feed is all about. Here's the feed. So the whole thing is, it's plastic, you know, obviously, uh, but it's, uh, you know, perfectly clear. Uh, the nib here, voila. Um, and then to set it back in there, um, it's, it's a round, uh, you know, hole here with a little flat part on the bottom. And that flat part is made for the bottom of the feed. So if you are gonna take it out for cleaning or anything like that, which you definitely can, which I just did, just make sure you, you know, you're doing it at your own risk, you know what you're doing. Um, that bottom part of the feed lines up to that flat part right there. And then it should fit in there just fine. If you don't have that lined up, then it's gonna be really, really hard to get it back into the pen. Don't force it too much because you probably don't have it aligned properly. There you go, it's back in there. And then the really cool thing about inking this thing up, aside from the fact that it's got a chrome, um, a chrome section, which, you know, whether you like it for writing or not, you have to admit, it's pretty darn easy to clean off. It's like, bam, that's it. And, and the thing is clean. The cool thing is, you know, not only because it's a demonstrator, can you see the ink in the converter, but the feed actually kind of the, turns the color of whatever ink you're using, which is just, just awesome looking. And I have, uh, you know, this is a clear pen. So I'm one of those people that, for whatever reason, I feel the need to match my ink to the color pen that I'm using. I didn't used to be that way, I swear. It just kind of happened, you know, that it turned out that way after I, gated, get, after I began to have such a, a large pen collection where I had all these different colors. And then I felt the, the compulsive need to fill my pens with colors that match the ink. Um, I got another blue one here, some Liberty's Elysium that has a nice blue tint to it. So you can really have some fun with the colors of these feeds, uh, which is, you know, just something neat that you don't typically get to do with a lot of your pens. But the um, do a little writing sample here for you. So again, this is Diamond Red Dragon in here. I have to admit that this nib is pretty awesome. It's 
pretty smooth, flows really nicely, performs really well. I've tried it with a few different inks. Tried it with Apache Sunset, Liberty's Elysium, Red Dragon, um, and it writes really, really well, especially for a pen of this price. I wish they made the nibs in other sizes because it's such a great writing pen that you, you almost want to use it in other sizes. But, you know, since this is all that's available right now, it's, it's a very enjoyable pen. And, and I've seen some other reviews out there of people that are using them and really enjoying, you know, these nibs. I get good, good lines, you know, going in every direction. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Artista Crystal. It's definitely a pen that you should consider if you are looking for a pen in the you know forty dollar or less price range. If you like medium nibs, which is all you can get, it, it's about the the it's about the uh, like a me, uh, uh, Lamy medium. You know that's about the size of the writing sample. But uh, that is my that is my impression of the Artista Crystal for what it's worth. That is the Artista Crystal. If you have any questions about it, you know, feel free to leave some comments or shoot me an email at briannagulliapens.com. Thanks so much for watching and right on.